Hey guys and welcome to my in-depth melee gearing guide for 2019. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. This video will cover four things, all of which you will find timestamps for in the description below. I will first be covering power versus tank armor for melee, then all gear slots explained slot by slot with examples for people that do not know what the corresponding slots are for, then an invention perk setup example and then multiple builds showing you the cost of the build and what items you should be buying slot by slot or piece by piece in an upgrade order with prices of course if you want to read the disclaimer for this video please pause the video as i'm moving on so power and tank armor which of the two should you pick for your melee gearing setup well almost always you should be picking power armor over tank armor that's because power armor usually has a decent defense bonus on its own compared to the higher defense bonus you're getting with tank armor. Now, power armor is better in almost all situations because you get a strength bonus, aka a damage increase. Now, with tank armor, you get higher defense and a life point bonus. That life point bonus can be useful in certain situations, but generally speaking with Slayer and most of the normal bosses, you want to be using power armor. An example of power versus tank armor is on screen now. We are looking at the Bane Armor Plus 4, aka the upgraded version, and the Anima Core of Zaros Armor, which is the power armor of tier 80. As you guys can see, the Bane Armor has a much higher defense bonus and a life point bonus, and the Anima Core of Zaros Armor has a strength bonus per piece and lower defense bonus. Now, Sometimes if you're struggling at a boss or monster with power armor, you could use tank armor for the extra life point and defense bonus to survive much more easily. Apart from that, tank armor is usually much cheaper than power armor. That has to do with the fact that there's less demand for the tank armor and it's usually cheaper to make. And thanks to the mining and smithing rework, there's now a bunch of new tiers of melee armor which are incredibly cheap compared to the existing power armor or other melee armors. We will now be covering the gear slots for your equipment setup. The first of which being the armor slots, being the helmet, body and leg slots. Now as you guys can see on screen now, there are the examples at level 70 plus which you can equip in those slots. Being categorized in DPS and tank gear. Now the stats are not on screen for a reason. This is just to give you a general example of what you can equip and buy for melee armor. If you really want to see all the stats of each armor, just go ahead and read up on the wiki. I'll leave a link in the description below. There's a good reason why I'm leaving this out of the guide, as this is information you can just read up on on the wiki if you really want to. You'll see why in the next portion of this guide. Now, as you guys can see, these armors are sorted by tier, and I did not mention all the armors, but these are pretty much the best armors for DPS and tank gear above level 70 defense. Next up are the weapon slots. You have a main hand and offhand weapon slot. In the offhand weapon slot, you can actually also equip a shield or a defender. Now, you have weapons that only have a main hand weapon, like an abyssal whip. You have weapons that are dual wield, aka a main hand and an offhand, like let's say Elder Rune long swords, and you have weapons that are two handed, like a god sword or a noxious scythe. The best weapons out there are listed on screen now, all above level 70, just like with the armor. Generally speaking, a higher tier weapon is better, as it has higher accuracy and higher damage, meaning you'll be doing more damage in game. Now there are some exceptions, like the Dragon Rider Lance, which is a halberd type weapon that requires 85 attack to use, aka tier 85. Now it has the same accuracy as a Noxious Scythe, being a tier 90 weapon, but it has the damage of a tier 80 weapon. Meaning that this weapon is much better at monsters or bosses with a high defense, aka that you have a low hit chance on them, as this tier 90 accuracy of this weapon will help you out and give you more damage per minute compared to a tier 80 weapon with tier 80 damage and accuracy. Again, I'll be getting more in depth into this at the gearing setups. Next up is the cape slash backpack slot. Now, there aren't too many options for this slot, especially not buyable ones. Usually, the items in this slot are earned. A good example of this would be the fire cape, which you obtain from killing Jad and completing the fire caves minigame. 
A viable example would be the Obsidian Cape or the Abomination Cape, which is 300 mil plus, so don't even worry about the Abomination Cape. It's just on there because it's a good cape. Now, these aren't all the capes you can use for melee bonuses, but these are the best ones. Of course, stuff like the Max and Comp Cape, you probably won't have if you're watching this video. Next up is the Boots or Feed Slot. Usually, this will be the exact same as your armor. Example, if you're using Necronium or Banos armor, which is tier 70 armor, you're probably going to be using Bandos or Necronium boots. Usually, in terms of spending money, I'd say this is a slot you want to worry least about, as it's going to give a minimal increase if it's a DPS or defense bonus increase, but still an increase. If you have the money, for example, tank boots like Elderune or Steadfast will help you out with the extra defense bonus. However, DPS boots like Torva, Masterwork or Trim Masterwork are definitely worth getting if you want to have the best melee PVM gear. Next up is the Gloves slash Gauntlet slot. Now this slot is a little more interesting as you have a bit more options that are a bit more interesting. Now just like the boots, you do have the same gloves of each armor tier, for example, Banos and Acronium, Bane, Torva, stuff like that, but you have more interesting options at the higher defense levels, especially at level 85 and 90. Take Cinderbanes for example. Though this item has an initially high cost, it's pretty much best in slot in terms of DPS. Now, that's because of one simple fact. It does poison damage, aka it poisons monsters that are not immune to poison while you're attacking them with this item equipped. But this item is really expensive. You might be better off getting the tank gloves like the Pneumatic or Elderune gloves, or gauntlets, as these are much cheaper. If you're getting the Elderune ones, be sure to get the plus 5 version for the best defense bonus. Next up is the Necklace slot, or Neck Jewelry slot. This slot is very interesting as you have many good choices, the best of which are listed on screen, pretty much from worst to best, except for the fact that some have some passive, very nice effects. Take the Blood Amulet of Fury for example. This is an item created combining a Blood Shard and a regular Amulet of Fury. Once made, this item's stats do stay the same, but it passively heals you 200 to 500 life points every 15 seconds, making this the cheap or mid-level player's free soul split. Extremely useful for Slayer and for surviving in certain Slayer or even some bossing situations. There are many versions of this blood amulet and they're extremely useful. Some other good amulets that are worth mentioning is definitely, for example, the Amulet of Souls. A extremely expensive but very worth amulet if you do have soul split. Not only is this one of the best amulets in game in terms of the stats it gives, it also has some nice passive effects. It has a 50% chance that soul split heals 25 to 50% more, an average of 18.75%. That is amazing. Also, the base damage reduction of protection prayers when on or deflection curses is increased by 10% giving them 60 instead of 50% damage reduction. That's a massive increase. The Amulet of Souls also gives you plus 5 prayer bonus and plus 46 to all combat styles. Next up is the Ring Slot, also having quite a lot of interesting choices. For melee, there are quite some useful rings, a few of which are listed on screen. Now, some are not listed on screen, like the Warrior's Ring imbued, which is much better than the regular Warrior's Ring. I just wanted to mention that I'm aware of that, but this is again just the slots explained. Some good rings are the Luck Rings, for example, the Rings of Fortune, the Luck of the Dwarves, or the Ring of Wealth. A good ring you can get from a quest is the Asylum Surgeon's Ring, or the Sixth Age Circuit, but that's pretty much just worse than the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. That ring is just much better. Now the Ring of Death is pretty much the best in slot ring if you're doing PVM as it can save you money if you die at a boss and it has a very nice increase to all combat styles. Definitely my pick if I was going to choose a ring for PVM but it does have a high initial cost. Next up is the pocket slot items, a bunch of which can actually be added to your tool belt using the Slayer Points rewards. But here are some good examples which you can put in your pocket slot. Some scrimshaws can be useful for PVM or Slayer. Some god books can increase your DPS. You can put blood essences in there with certain bonuses or insignias from the Barbarian Assault minigame. You can also put crushing items in there like the Bone Crusher or Charming Imp if you do not have the Slayer Point Shop reward that will add them to your tool belt. You can also put an item like that in your inventory though if you did not know. Next up is the shield slot which you can put shields or defenders or an offhand weapon in. 
I just want to mention these briefly, but generally speaking, if you're doing Slayer or casual PvM, you don't really require shield, except for the resonance ability at certain bosses. Now, if you're doing high tier PvM, like bomb tanking or whatever, you will require a shield, but that's very in depth on its own. I just wanted to mention the shields right now on screen. Now, defenders can also be super useful thanks to the accuracy boost they give and the chance to deflect damage. They are also listed on screen. Do keep in mind if you're trying to go for the defenders, you require the tier below whatever you have, and then you have to go to the next tier, then to the next tier. You, you can't just hop from a dragon defender all the way up to a cow fight defender. Next up is the Sigil slot, which can hold Sigils, as you may have guessed. Now, Sigils can be obtained from Shattered Worlds or by combining 1000 Vital Sparks. Now, these cost Shattered Anima or Vital Sparks to activate depending on which one you have. These are very situational and only used in certain situations by certain players. So if you're a casual player and you're just slaying around, don't worry too much about these. Now before I get into the gearing builds or example builds, I just want to go over invention perk slots and invention perks. As I'm going to assume in whatever gear tier you're going to be looking at afterwards, you're going to augment your weapons if you do have invention unlocked and add weapon gizmos or armor gizmos to the augmented gear. Now you have two gizmo slots in your main hand or two handed weapon and in your body and legs. You can not augment your helmet just yet by the way. And you have one gizmo slot in your offhand weapon if you're dual wielding. Now, some budget perk examples are on screen now. For your weapon, you want to have P5, E2, aka Precise 5, and Equilibrium 2, or Precise 3, Equilibrium 2, which is even cheaper. If you're dual wielding, you want the same thing pretty much, but on your offhand, you want to be using Flanking. For your body, you want to be using Crackling 2 and Biting 2, which are both reasonably cheap, if you think about it, and for your legs, Impatient 2 and Enhance the Voted 3. Some other options for your armor would be Absorbative 3, Venom Blood, or Slayer perks that increase your damage against a certain type of monster. Now, an even better perk setup example, if you have a little bit more money, is for your weapon, you want to have Aftershock 3, Precise 4, Equilibrium 2. Now, that's a very expensive perk to get, or you really have to be very lucky, so Aftershock 3, Precise 3, Equilibrium 2 is probably a more realistic perk setup for your weapon. For your dual wield weapons, you pretty much want to have the same, except for your offhand, you want to be using flanking free. For your body, you want to be using crackling free and biting free, which is insanely expensive, so if you cannot afford it, just use biting too. As for crackling three, it really isn't too expensive, as you require explosive components, which you can easily get from dwarven hand cannons. As for your legs, you want to use Enhanced Devoted Free and Impatient Free. If you're using a shield for whatever switch or PVM situation whatsoever, you want to have Turtling 3 on it. Other options would be Planted Feed and Invigorating if you're very lucky on getting Aftershock Free and that perk or Aftershock 2 for your weapon. Now we will be getting into the gearing builds after this and I just want to say keep in mind that whatever you're doing you want to augment your gear with some perks whatsoever if you do have invention unlocked as the increase in damage or just it helps you much more than you think and the initial cost is going to be worth it. So yeah let's get into the first low tier build shall we? So this low tier build only requires you to have 5 million GP or a 5 mil bank and 70 plus combat stats, as you require level 70 defense and 70 attack to equip all these items listed on screen. Now the item list is to the right. Bandos Armor, Necroleum Great Axe plus 4 for the weapon, an Amulet of Glory for the necklace slot, a Ring of Luck which is a very cheap ring, an Obsidian Cape and Necroleum Gloves and Boots plus 4, which are also very cheap and way below the Grand Exchange price at the moment. Now this gear is just your low tier, you're pretty much you're set for some Slayer and maybe God Wars Dungeon 1 bossing if you're doing it with a friend. This gear is super cheap and basic, but it's going to get you started in game. Some items you want to be going for are the Enhanced Excalibur and the Fire Cape, which you obtain from the Fight Caves minigame, which you should be able to do with these items. Now, to the bottom you see an upgrade by order. Now, some of these items may require higher level stats and actually will once you get to the more expensive stuff. For example, the Sour Dome and Sword. Only costing 140k, being a tiny but upgrade over the Necronium Great Axe plus 4. Then you want to get yourself a Warrior's Ring, as this ring has a much higher stat bonus for melee compared to the Ring of Luck. 
Then once you have 1.9 mil GP extra and you have 285 stats in terms of attack and strength or strength not per se but strength will help you out with damage, you want to get yourself a Blade of Nevora and Avarice. These are tier 85 weapons which have tier 90 accuracy but tier 80 damage. These are very good and will get you into mid tier PVM. The next upgrade I personally would go for is the Ring of Fortune, costing 1.1 million GP. This item is a good luck ring, which has decent stats overall for all combat styles, and it has unlimited teleports to the Grand Exchange, which can definitely come in handy when banking. Then the next upgrade is a whopping 28 million GP, the Dragon Rider Lance. Now this item is so good for melee. If you're bossing, you're doing Slayer, it's a amazing weapon. It has to do with the fact that they can actually hit enemies one tile away from you. Meaning if there's a cluster of enemies around you, the first ring around you will be hit. If you're using an AoE ability like Cleave and Quake, Hurricane, stuff like that, or Meteorite even as the ultimate, and the enemy standing behind them, aka the second ring, will also be hit. Meaning you can easily slay a bunch of mobs, and it's useful at certain bosses as you're away from melee distance. Apart from that, the extra accuracy is extremely useful on certain slayer tasks and at bosses. Then afterwards, I would just go for a Bandos boots and gloves upgrade to get yourself some more DPS gear, as it's only 200k for the gloves and 135k for the boots. Now let's get into the mid-tier build, shall we? Now the mid-tier build starts out pretty cheap. At least for a mid-tier build, I think it's pretty cheap. Only costing 34.5 million GP in total. Now the armor we're going to be building on is Bay Knight Armor plus 4. This is because it's very cheap. And of course, since the last build, you probably have yourself some Bandos boots and gloves anyways, if you've upgraded from that point on. Then we have the Dragon Rider Lance, being pretty much your entry level weapon into mid tier bossing and high level slayer. Then we have the Warrior's Ring, which can be imbued for even extra bonuses, an Amulet of Fury, which is a good amulet overall, and the Fire Cape or Skill Cape or whatever other cape you have. If you really don't have both of these, then just use a Obsidian Cape instead. Now the items I listed in the items to get section are a Kiln Cape, the Asylum Surgeon's Ring and the Ring of Vigor. The Kiln Cape is obtained from the Fight Kill minigame. Now if you can't get it or it's too hard, don't worry about it too much. It's just a very good, almost best in slot cape for melee. The Asylum Surgeon's Ring is a very good cheap ring. Well, it doesn't cost you anything, but will require you to have to complete the Broken Home quest a few times and complete it in a certain time period. And the Ring of Vigor, which is a useful PVM switch ring, costing 50,000 Dungeoneering tokens and requiring level 62 Dungeoneering, which has two useful passives, pretty much saving you adrenaline when using ultimates or special attacks. As for the upgrade by order, you will require higher level stats to get the first one, the Drygor Longswords. Now I recommend getting yourself to 90 weapons if you're going for bossing, as the Drygors can be very useful. If you want to, you can just stick with your Dragon Rider Lance and upgrade your armor instead, but I would always say upgrade your weapons before your armor, as tier 90 damage will help you out a bunch, and Drygors are pretty damn cheap, only being 36 mil for the set. Now I am aware that there's an item called the Elder Rune to H Sword plus 5, which is almost tier 90 damage and accuracy, but just a bit below that and it's extremely cheap, probably being only around 1 mil GP or something. The GP price is way off by the way. But I just go for the Drygors instead, personally, because they are just a little bit better, and otherwise it's just going to be a very minimal upgrade over the Dragon Rider Lance, though the Dragon Rider Lance AoE ability, aka Harbor type weapon, is probably going to be more useful in most situations with a lot of Slayer mobs. Next up is the Anima Core of Zaros armor upgrade, because Bay Knight is tank armor, and Anima Core of Zaros armor is 63 million GP, and is just much better as it gives you damage bonus, aka strength bonus. You can alternatively also go with Torva if you wish to, and augmenting Torva is definitely worth it. Now the helmet of Torva is actually cheaper than the Anima Core of Zaros helm, so you can actually get yourself Anima Core of Zaros body and legs, and a Torva helmet for even less money as the Torva Helmet is around 40 million and the Anima Core Helm of Zaros is 22 million GP. A big difference, though the Anima Core Armor does not degrade, as long as you don't make it into the refined T85 version. The next upgrade would definitely be the Noxious Scythe, probably being the best melee weapon out there if you're not going to be using a Zaros Godsword at a boss, which is the tier 92 weapon. It costs 155 mil, at the moment at least. Now that 155 mil will definitely be worth it, as it has tier 90 accuracy and damage, 
and is just insanely good for Slayer and bossing for, let's say, Vindicto or something, or the Twin Furies. It's, it's, it's an extremely good weapon, and definitely worth the upgrade. The next upgrade I would go for is a Blood Amulet of Fury if you're going to be doing a lot of Slayer. However, if you're going to be doing bossing, maybe that Fury Amulet won't be as useful as you think. You might be better off going with an Amulet of Souls instead if you do have Curses. Or a Reaper Necklace. But we'll be talking about that in the high tier builds. This is more or less a mid tier build, so that's why I'm mentioning the Blood Amulet of Fury requiring 80 crafting to create, which can be assisted with a Blood Shard and an Amulet of Fury. The next upgrade would be the Luck of the Dwarf Ring, which gives you unlimited teleports to kill the Grim, the Grand Exchange and such, and is the best tier Luck Ring, because it's a tier 4 Luck Ring. Now after that I would just recommend on unlocking invention and augmenting and perking out your gear instead of buying other things. Or just go to the next high tier build which will be the budget build for the higher levels. Here's the budget high tier build, basically being an entry level build for high level gear. Thanks to the mining smithing rework, Elder Room plus 5 armor is extremely cheap and definitely worth using if you can't afford Torva, Malevolent or Trimmed Masterwork. Now, I went with Dry Gores for weapons because you cannot augment the Elder Room plus 5 to H Sword. I also went with the Brawler's Knockout Necklace, which is a melee amulet created by using a Chaotic Remnant on a Sardomian's Whisper, providing a plus 44 strength bonus, which is insane. It can actually also be turned into a Blood Necklace amulet using a Blood Shard. Now for the ring I went with the Asylum Surgeon's Ring because it's basically free but it will require you to complete the Broken Home quest a few times with a time record and stuff like that. If you cannot use this ring or you don't have it you can also use a Ring of Fortune or the Luck of the Dwarves instead. That will cost you more however. As for the cape, a Kiln Cape or Skill Cape will do. As for the gear, like I said, just L Rune plus 5 armor all around, also the boots and gloves, just being very cheap overall. As for items to get, you really want to get yourself a Berserker or Brawler Aura so that you have extra melee accuracy or melee damage. Do keep in mind these will cost you loyalty points and loyalty points are only obtained at the moment through being a member. The build cost is around 43 million GP. At this point in time you really want to have a Ring of Vigor, a Enhanced Excalibur and Overloads. As for item upgrades, you really want to get yourself a Ring of Death if you are going to be planning to get into PvM. This will set you back a whopping 27 million though, but this is pretty much the best in-slot ring for PvM. It gives you high bonuses and it gives you a chance to save money every time you die. It can even save your familiar for a percentage of the charge of the Ring of Death when you die. It will save your familiar and all the items inside, so if you're using a BOB, your familiar will be still alive with all the food inside. Then I'd recommend going up to Malevolent or Masterwork Armor. Malevolent is actually cheaper, so it's only 26 million, and it will give you a set of tier 90 armor for the helmet, body, and legs. I highly suggest you augment this armor as well. After that, I would say the next upgrade should be an Amulet of Souls for PVM. This will set you back 26.5 million GP. After that, I would suggest you go for Cinderbane Gloves. These will cost you 31 million GP and are amazing and pretty much best in slot DPS gloves as said before, as they poison enemies and just have very high stat bonuses. If you don't agree with this build or your budget is higher, let's go on to the expensive or more expensive high tier build. Coming to the high tier build, you can see that the initial build cost is going to set you back a whopping 304 mil GP. But then again, if you want good PVM gear, this is what it's going to be costing you. It doesn't even count in the cost of invention perks, which can set you back over 100 million GP easily. Getting into the build, you want to be using Cinderbane Gloves, Ember Keen Boots, the Ring of Death, a Kiln Cape or Skill Cape, or even a Max Cape or Com Cape if you do have that cape and you're watching this video, because those are better. A Noxious Scythe, of course augmented, just like the Malevolent Armor, and the Amulet of Souls for your necklace slot. Now, you want to get some items for PVM if you're going to be using this build. You might want to get yourself a Defender, a Ring of Vigor, a Enhanced Excalibur, maybe a Blood Essence. You want to have Invention Unlock for sure, and you want to start making Combination Potions for Overloads. You also want to have a high summoning level for B.O.B. Familiars or Damage Boosting Nihils. Now the upgrade buy order is actually pretty optional. 
At this point, you have a very good build. Though if you want even better stuff, you're going to have to pay for it. The first upgrade I'd personally go for is the T92 trimmed masterwork armor, costing a whopping 174 mil, being almost two thirds of the initial build cost. But this is the best in slot melee armor. The next upgrade is actually an upgrade that is better than getting a tier 92 weapon, which is the upgrade after that. It's getting a Praesul Codex for the Malevolence tier 99 prayer, which is a whopping increase in damage. It will set you back 540 million GP, however. This is of course up to you. If you want to save up and get a tier 92 weapon just for the looks or just for whatever reason, you can go for the tier 92 weapon first. The tier 92 melee weapon is a Zaros Godsword, and it will cost you 1 billion GP. After all that, you really should be knowing what you're doing, and you should be into PVM already, as most of the other items will only increase your PVM experience by a small margin, but they will increase it. One of these items is the Air of Thor's Grimoire, which is unlocked from a token dropped by Solak, one of the hardest bosses in the game. It has the same stats as the regular god books, but it also increases the player's critical hit chance by 12%, stacking with the Biting Perk, which is a armor perk, up to 18%. And the other items are the Ingenuity of Humans, the Reaper Necklace, which gives you an accuracy increase, the Amulet of Souls with a ornament kit added to it, making a bit better than the normal Amulet of Souls, and the Book of Death, which is made using a cut hydrix and four death notes, and you need to unlock the ability to create this book from the Reaper for 500 Reaper points. It costs around 30 million GP to make this book. It has decent stats, but it actually has a small chance to instantly kill monsters or deal big damage to bosses, making it a useful and worthwhile PVM item. And that pretty much wraps up this in-depth melee gearing guide for RuneScape 3 for 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this video helpful. I put a massive amount of time and effort into this video to make it as original, in-depth and useful as possible with a bunch of information. If you guys have any feedback whatsoever, please let me know as I'm planning to make a ranged and magic version of this as well. If there's anything you'd like to see done differently, please let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, catch you guys later, peace.